Welcome back, everybody. In this video, I'm going to give you some examples of predicate functions and explain what they are and how you might use them in your code. So predicate functions are take a value, like, a, like this a here, and return a Boolean, so a true or a false value. So if we were to write one of the two simplest possible predicate functions, we would, we're going to call it p, just to keep it easy, p for predicate. We would create a function, it would take one value, and then its return value would be true. That would be one of the two. Obviously, the other easiest one would be returning just false. The two different Boolean values without doing any evaluation of the actual uh, value of x. And in JavaScript, the way that you would generally use a predicate function is in the context of calling dot .filter on an array. So we'll start with the nums array. All my arrays obviously are right here. Uh, and then we just pass in the predicate function. And so what filter will do is it will go through each element in the array, pass it into our predicate function as x, and then the predicate function will return a true or a false value. So we've passed in true no matter what, which means that every single value that's in the initial array will be evaluated to true and will be returned into result. So if we console log result with our initial predicate function, then what we will see is no values have been removed. Likewise, if we pass in false, and we run it again, then no values are returned because every single one has been uh, evaluated to be false, which means it should not be included in the new array that is returned and stored in result. Of course, not very often, unless you're just planning on emptying an array or for some reason keeping it exactly the same, uh, would you ever do that? Normally, you're going to write some sort of expression using the value that was passed in to create some sort of filter that will give you the only the values back in the new array that you want. So if we wanted to only get the even values, for example, we could take x, get the modulus, which will be the remainder after we divide it by a value, which will be 2. And if we say that that's going to be 0, then this is only going to be true with even numbers, because 2 divided by 2 leaves a remainder of 0, which is true. But 2 divided by 3 is not going to equal a remainder of 0. So it'll be false. So now if we save that, write this out, then we get all the even values. And likewise, if we were to flip that, then this would give us all the odd values. So pretty straightforward. You can do this with any data type, as long as it evaluates to some sort of value, which means that you'll always need some sort of equality test, and that's how you can evaluate if something is true or false. So the equality operators are going to be the double equals, the triple equals, uh, not equal to, uh, less than, equal to, uh, greater than, equal to, less than, or greater than. And if you're if you have values on both sides of those binary operators, you'll get an expression that will either evaluate to be true or to false. Now, JavaScript is very flexible. So if we were to pass in something like an empty array, it is going to actually coerce that into a Boolean. Uh, so I believe our program will run as normal and give us nothing back. No, it'll give us everything back. So this will, but the, the point of this being that it does not actually care what you pass in. It will attempt to evaluate it to a uh, true or false value. So you just have to keep that in mind that type coercion will still occur. This is what I was thinking of. Gives you back an empty value uh, because apparently a empty array is truthy, um, but we know that an empty array dot length will be zero and zeros are falsy, which means they will become a false value, which will filter everything out of the array. Now, if we were to, instead of nums, iterate through a, an array of strings, then we could do something like uh, dot length greater than 3. And this would 
Oops. And this would give us all the values in the strings array that have a length that is greater than three, which those do. And as a final example, let's do the objects. So if we just wanted the ones that have, let's say, a B property, that's then we get the two objects that do have a B property. And if we just wanted the B property that is equal to three, then it will just give us the second item in the array, which is that guy there. Finally, it's good to keep in mind that filter also gives us uh, the index of the item being iterated over and the array that is being iterated over. So we could do something like if the um, index equals array.length subtract one, then this will give us the last item in the array. which is that guy there. So it's some different, a different way that you can interact with arrays. Because if you are trying to combine all the elements of the array, you'll be using reduce. If you're trying to transform them, you'll be using map. And if you're trying to filter or remove elements from the array, uh, you'll be fil do using the filter method. And predicate functions are the easiest way to do that instead of trying, or it's really the only way to do that. Uh, but thinking of it as being a simple function that takes a, a value, which would be the value from the array, and produces an expression that will be converted into a Boolean value or evaluated to a Boolean value, which is what we prefer. Uh, the, less, the less weird type coercion we leave in JavaScript, JavaScript's hands, likely the better. So for example, in the example I gave earlier, that was this guy or dot length, that's implicit type coercion. It's probably not a good idea. You would want to do something like that because now we've used one of the equality binary operators. That will be evaluated to true if it's an empty, if the, uh, well, this will actually always be true. So this would be the same as just writing true because an empty array dot length will always be zero. But at least it's correct. We are using a, we're creating an expression that will evaluate to a Boolean value. Now, this is not a complex topic, so quickly going to move on from the JavaScript now and just show one or two examples in Haskell in case you are not a JavaScript developer. So here is the same syntax in Haskell. This was the first nums example I gave of finding all the even numbers in an array. So we've created the nums array up here, one through 10. Created the predicate function, called it p. It takes a value x. It will calculate the modulus of the x value and two. And if it equals zero, then we know it's even. And then we'll assign the resulting array to the, value, to the variable result or the constant, I should say, result. And then the way that you apply filter is instead of calling dot map on nums, excuse me, you call, you uh, invoke filter with the predicate function passing as the first argument and the nums array or whatever array you were uh, going to filter through as the second argument. And if we print that out, uh, what this ends up looking like is the even numbers from the nums array. And the way that you can change that is if we wanted this to be all the odd numbers, let's write this, and I'm just going to have to compile this again. Sorry, .hs. This will give us all the odd numbers just because we are instead of evaluating to true when we divide by, or instead of asking if we are dividing by uh, two and getting a remainder of zero, we're saying, do we get a value divided by two that is not equal to zero as the remainder? And now if we execute that, we get the odd numbers. So that's the, that's the syntax for Haskell. You can apply the exact same rules as you saw in the JavaScript example, just with a slightly different syntax. This is obviously a simpler syntax, and that's largely because 
predicate functions and list filtering is very, uh, very integral to functional programming languages, of which Haskell is a uh, prime example. So check out more to do with functional programming in my uh, functional programming in JavaScript series. I'm likely going to start coming out with some videos in Haskell as I work my way through that. Uh, I'm finding that if you understand my JavaScript series for functional programming really well, Haskell will probably come to you quite easily. Uh, I'm finding the syntax to be very refreshing, and I'm enjoying it, so I want to share it with you guys. So like the video if you like this video. Uh, give me some feedback if you have any. I'd love to have some conversations, some comments, some feedback on how I'm doing, what I could improve, what I could uh, focus more on in the future. So see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.